Welcome back to the Quaxi's RF Wisdom series. Today, we're diving into another fascinating video. Scattering parameters, commonly denoted as S parameters, play a crucial role in characterizing RF and microwave components and systems. For microwave circuits, unlike low frequency counterparts, it is essential to consider the concept of waves when describing voltages and currents. S parameters encode the interaction between voltage waves and microwave components. The wave behavior in microwave circuits becomes evident as signals propagate. Reflection occurs when there is an impedance mismatch, analogous to how light reflects when encountering a change in the propagation medium, such as striking a piece of glass. This phenomenon results in a portion of the microwave signal reflecting back to the source while the rest transmits to the other ports. Reflection and transmission coefficients are introduced to quantify these effects. The reflection coefficient represents the ratio of reflected to incident fields, while the transmission coefficient signifies the ratio of transmitted to incident fields. As we will see shortly, this fundamental concept extends to RF and microwave components as well and is the basis for defining S parameters. Now, let's apply the previously discussed concept to microwave circuits. The AI amplitude corresponds to the amplitude of the incident wave on port I, while the BI amplitude is associated with the wave coming from port I. The B components are comprised of two parts. For instance, B1 consists of the reflected wave from port 1 and the transmitted wave from port 2. Now, let's apply the previously discussed concept to microwave circuits. The S parameters serve as coefficients connecting A and B amplitudes. Represented in matrix form, it is known as the S parameter matrix. The diagonal components signify reflection coefficients, while the others represent transmission coefficients. Note that the first index in the S parameter refers to the receiving port, and the second one to the transmitting port. Thus, S21 is the transmission coefficient from port 1 to port 2. Now, let's delve into the calculation of S parameters. Specifically, let's focus on S21. According to the equation for B2, S21 is the ratio of B2 to A1, assuming A2 is 0. When A2 equals 0, it implies that port 2 has no excitation and no reflection. This means that port 2 is terminated in its characteristic impedance which is usually 50 ohms. An essential consideration during the measurement of S parameters for each port is to terminate all other ports with their characteristic impedances. This step is taken to prevent any reflections from other ports to only take into account the reflection from the measured port. Let's delve deeper into the process of measuring the S parameters of a two port device. Check out this video showcasing how a network analyzer conducts S parameter measurements. In the presented scenario, the incident wave on port 1 carries the amplitude A1. A portion of this wave reflects from port 1, denoted as B1, while the remaining portion transmits to port 2, represented by the amplitude B2. The S parameters S11 and S21 are defined as follows. Now, our focus shifts to measuring S22 and S12. To accomplish this, we excite port 2 while terminating port 1 with its characteristic impedance. Now, let's explore S parameter matrices for some microwave components with different port configurations. An ideal short is a one-port component with S11 equals minus 1. For an ideal transmission line of length L, the S parameter matrix has zero diagonal components, indicating perfect matching with no reflection. The off-diagonal components are E to the minus gamma L, where gamma is the complex propagation constant. In a unidirectional amplifier, the S matrix reflects perfectly matched ports with zero diagonal elements. Only transmission from port 1 to port 2 occurs, making S21 equal to the gain G. 
A circulator, a three-port component, exhibits the following S-parameter matrix. There is transmission only between specific ports, namely ports 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1. Therefore, only S13, S21, and S32 are equal to 1. Now, let's talk about the interpretation of S parameters. The A and B parameters introduced earlier are voltages. Therefore, S parameters, in linear units, represent the ratio of voltages. But we usually express S parameters in logarithmic units. In this context, the transmission coefficient is called insertion loss, and the reflection coefficient is known as return loss. Remember, both insertion loss and return loss are positive numbers. It's desirable to have low insertion loss, meaning minimal losses and high return loss, suggesting effective matching or low reflections. For example, in this band pass filter, over the pass band, the return loss is larger than 20 dB, and insertion loss is very small, around 0.3 dB. There is a key difference between S parameters in linear units and logarithmic units. As mentioned earlier, S parameters in linear units relate to the ratio of voltages, while S parameters in logarithmic units relate to power. This is why, in link budget calculations, gain and insertion loss values are added to or subtracted from power values. Now, let's explore what various return loss values mean. But before diving into that, it's important to highlight that the relationship between reflection and transmission coefficients follows energy conservation, as expressed through S parameters. Essentially, understanding the amount of reflection enables us to calculate the corresponding amount of transmission. Here we see a table for different values of return loss and how to interpret them. In the logarithmic scale, a 0 dB return loss means full reflection, with no power going into the component. A 10 dB return loss signifies 10% reflection, with 90% of the power going into the device. And a 20 dB return loss signifies 1% reflection, with 99% of the power going into the device. Now, let's delve into the essential terminology for S parameters. While the S parameter between ports fundamentally represents a transmission coefficient, its nomenclature varies depending on specific properties and contexts. Previously, we got familiar with insertion and return loss. The return loss determines how well a port is matched. The insertion loss is mainly used in passive circuits such as filters and cables to show the amount of attenuation a signal undergoes. The gain is mainly used in active circuits such as amplifiers to represent the amount of amplification a signal undergoes. Coupling is mainly used in components with three or more ports, such as couplers, where it is desirable to couple a portion of the signal to a specific port. If the coupling to specific ports is not desirable, it is called isolation. For circuits such as power dividers, isolators, and circulators, the signal should not leak from one port to another. Therefore, high isolation is desired in such circumstances. We appreciate your time. Your support means a lot to us. Please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content. At Quaxies, we deliver top-notch content, offering exceptional courses, books, articles, and expert insights. Stay ahead in your field, distinguish yourself with our hands-on certified courses, and elevate both your knowledge and value in the job market. Join our journey of success and register for one of our transformative courses today.